General Manager George Payton has 18 games worth of tape on quarterback Drew Locke. Will he see enough potential in the young gunslinger to give him the reins in 2021? Or will the Broncos look elsewhere for their next franchise quarterback? We're discussing all that and so much more on today's edition of Broncos Beat. Hello everyone and welcome inside the UC Health Training Center. I'm Alexis Perry joined today by former NFL quarterback and CEO of Jenkins Elite, Tim Jenkins. Tim, thanks for being here today. I'm pumped up. No better way to uh, start a Monday. This is going to be fun. You know, quarterbacks are always a hot topic around the league, but it seems like there's an even greater emphasis on the position here in Denver as the Broncos look to get back to their historically winning ways here in 2021. So with that said, I figured today we could take a deep dive into Drew Locke's 18 game sample size, see where he can improve and see some of the things that he's doing well. First things first, your process. When you're evaluating an NFL quarterback, what are you looking for? I mean, really, it's consistent whether you're evaluating an NFL guy or a college guy, right? The first thing you start with is their traits. And I don't mean like how hard he can throw, right? That plays a factor. Accuracy, height, right? Not that you have to be 6'4", but it's going to be tough to be under center with all those big guys if, if you're, you know, right. five foot. So the first thing we start with is traits. From there, we're going to work to processing. And processing ultimately is the most important thing. Traits will get you in the door. You have to have a certain amount of them to even have a shot at it. Okay. From there, it's all about processing, right? You think about 18, who you just did a great story on, and now he's going to the Hall of Fame. We don't sit there and say, hey, Peyton Manning was great because he could throw the ball super hard, right? He threw it hard enough, but he was great because he was a processor. The way you really evaluate for that for these guys, football IQ, just general football IQ, two minute, four minute, all the situational stuff. And then you're gonna dive into PSL, which I'm excited that we'll actually be able to watch some tape. PSL is just pre slash post snap look. What that means, a really like watered down version of it is two shell, three shell. So if there's two high safeties, hey, we're gonna work this side. If there's a single high, we'll work this side. That's kind of uh, oversimplifying, I guess, the process yeah. that an NFL quarterback goes through. But that's just generally what you're gonna look for and what you wanna see, whether it's a college guy or a quarterback going from year one to year two or just progressing throughout his rookie season. Well, when George Payton was hired, you know, one of his top priorities was to really get in and start looking at the tape of all of these players, but we have to assume that Drew Locke was at the top of that list. So as someone who has studied Locke's game, what were your biggest takeaways uh, from what Locke has put on tape over the past two years? Well, first thing, you got to throw 2019 out, right? It's not the same offensive coordinator. Why? And so <laughs> in reality, the NFL, we run the same concepts, right? 80% okay. of the league runs the same concepts. You'll have Cliff Kingsbury in Arizona who does nothing similar to anybody else. So right. you're throwing 2019 out because while the concepts are the same, the verbiage is different, the personnel is different, and really there was no pressure in 2019. Drew got thrown in late in a kind of situation where if he's good, it's awesome. And if not, nobody's really gonna care because the team had struggled so much. So I think you throw 2019 out and you've got to evaluate 2020 in a vacuum. The really nice thing that you saw him progress through, and again, why I'm excited to get to the tape, is you saw him make better and better decisions, whether it was, hey, knowing on this man zone concept, I'm gonna get to the right guy, or if it's just a simple thing of killing a play and getting to the next one, he really progressed throughout the season with that. Uh, the football IQ side of it is what we really wanted to see or what I wanted to see throughout the season grow and it has grown and I think it's something the fans should be really excited about. Okay, so it sounds like Drew Locke is beginning to process the game at a much higher level, but that's the mental side of the game. So what do you see about him in the physical side of his game? Physically, you got to love him. He can make every throw, right? He can big rip arm. it all over, big <laughs> arm. You know, he probably looks like you on Thanksgiving Day with your family. I've seen you throw before. It's great. So, no, he can rip it. He can do everything you want to see. He can throw the sail route. He can throw the comeback. He can throw the go. He can throw the big stick at eight post, which is the one you saw him hit K.J. Hamler on against uh, the Carolina Panthers. So, physically, he can do everything. From a footwork perspective, there's a lot of room for improvement. I know we'll break that down, too. He needs to transition some of his footwork when he's in the shotgun. A lot of that showed up. A lot of people thought that meant he couldn't read the defense, when in reality he was late because of his footwork. So he was getting to the right spots, but he was just late because of the footwork. So I think physically you're seeing really everything you want to see from a young quarterback. He's checking all the boxes physically. There's a couple changes that he'll make, and I think there's certain things that the team will get better at, whether that be scramble drill with the receivers, because you saw him get out of the pocket, you saw his mobility. I mean, how many third downs were there that you saw that the defense was in two man and they were getting the heck out of there and he yeah. took it and ran and, you know, got down, protected himself and got a first down. So there's a lot of his game that you're really gonna like physically. Um, mentally, can he continue to make the progress that he's been making? And then obviously, can he fix some of those issues that, he, that we saw in the shotgun? 
Okay, well, when it comes to being an elite quarterback, there is no offseason. So what do you hope that Drew Locke is really focusing on right now? What does a successful offseason look like for Drew? I think the most important thing is they're not going to have OTAs or it appears like they're not going to have OTAs in the normal manner. So the most important thing is, one, is he going to transition his footwork in the gun? Is he going to tie it better to these concepts, meaning throwing on time? And then is he going to be able to drag those guys out there and do that, right? The best thing the Denver Broncos could have is if there were pictures and reports of him at every high school, right? You see the high school kids always oh, posting right. pictures when they see all these guys out at the fields. The best thing is, is he dragging his receivers out there and is he timing everything up with them? Because that's gonna be what's gonna show up during training camp, especially if they're all Zoom for OTAs again and they're not any physical reps. Right. And he also knows the system. That's something that we don't really, that we don't talk about enough because last year while he was doing dragging Judy out there and everybody else, he hadn't been around Shermer enough, right? He didn't know exactly what they were asking of him. So now that he has a full season of knowing exactly what they want from him, those reps in the off season will be even better. So hopefully he's dragging those guys out there to high school camps, of course, staying safe, you know, distancing, doing everything. But I, I just think as long as he's dragging those guys out there, he's timing everything up with his feet, you're gonna see a massive production growth this football season, and then ultimately everyone in Denver is going to be a lot happier when these guys are competing to go make a wild card run. Okay, really quick before we go to break, I have to ask, as somebody who has been a quarterback in this league, can you put yourself in Drew's shoes this past year and those Zoom meetings? How difficult do you think that really was for him? I mean, I think it's just as hard as it was on my four-year-old, right? My four-year-old was in Zoom preschool, <laughs> and I, every time I look in the corner, he's dunking on his Nerf hoop. So, you know, I, I just think anytime you're doing something over Zoom, we've all gone through it this year, right? It's been crazy right. for everybody. Anytime you're trying to learn a brand new system, and really he's going from college algebra to advanced calculus, yeah. right? It's just, it's going to be a tough transition. So I think putting myself in his shoes, I, I had a hard enough time as it was. That's why I got fired and I'm here with you. So I had a hard enough time as it was learning everything, and that's in person. I couldn't imagine doing it over Zoom. All right, well, coming up after the break, Tim is going to break down the tape. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Broncos Beat. Alexis Perry here alongside former NFL quarterback Tim Jenkins. Tim, I know last year people were really critical of Drew Locke's ability to recognize what the defense was doing and then hit the right receiver. But I do feel like that is something that we saw improvement in over time. It definitely got better, but they should be critical early on, and that's what we're going to jump into the Raiders tape to see. So the Broncos are in 12 personnel, meaning one back and two tight ends. So the back is the H, Y, F. Anytime you have a number system, first one's back, then tight ends. You minus from five and you get your receiver, okay? okay? But we all, we both failed math, so we'll skip that. Right. We've got these two guys that you need to watch. We're gonna jump shift these guys. That's what we called it in St. Louis. If these guys run with him, it's man. If they just bump, right? We just bump, yep. it's gonna be zone, okay? okay? Watch, and then you tell me what is it. Okay, boom, shift. Are they running with? It's man. It's man to man, okay? Got so it. we know it's man, the Bronco, or the Raiders are in cover one robber. Man to man here, man, man, man. You see combo on the back. What that means if the back releases here, he'll take him and then he's the robber. Okay. If he releases there, which is where he goes, 38 takes him and then we're, our robber's here. You go ahead and point that safety. That's our center fielder. He's playing deep. No one deeper than you. Okay. They tell those guys deeper than the deepest. Okay. okay? Gold Jacket Steve knows that better than anybody. Okay. What we've got here is H flat. You're going to see this corner route and you're going to see the flat from the back. Right. Okay. That's our zone side. Meaning if the Raiders were in zone, if they would have bumped, it would have been zone, and you're going to look at the corner down to the flat. Okay. Was it zone? No, it's man. No, it's man. Perfect. So we're going to go ahead and pick this guy right here, number 27, and get Judy going across wide open, key third down conversion. Or are we? So Drew Locke throws to the zone side. Right. Perfectly covered up because it's a combo coverage. You can't pick a combo defender. Wide and open. there he is. Okay. And I'd like to think if we throw it here, he'll get to there. Okay, so don't be afraid to throw short of the sticks on third down. That's what they tell you, especially if you got a gifted guy like Jerry Judy. Okay, okay? we're gonna go ahead and look at the tight. You can see the guys running over. You see that? You can clearly see they're running over and trying to be with a man. Right. Unfortunately, Drew Locke's eyes don't even peek the mesh, so you know he blew the read and he just goes right to the flat. Watch him, boom, right to the flat, throws it out there. It's a tackle, and unfortunately, this is third down, so now we're not only backed up, but we're punting. Okay. Changes the whole game field position, but Week 17. It gets better. The only slight difference, and we'll get to it, but it's same thing. Cover one robber, you see the combo on the back. Yep. Everyone else man to man. The only difference at all is now we're in mesh H bullet, which means, hey, go ahead and peek the bullet. Yep. Because if it's man to man, we want to throw a touchdown, right? 
Instead, the bolt's not going to be there because the backer does a good job. We want to pick this guy. You got him circled right here. Okay, let's go ahead and watch the pick. Boom. Do you see that? Perfect rub, right? You're getting yep. close enough to bother him, but you're still giving him space to where they don't throw a flag. This is ideal pick. Perfect. Okay. Drew Lock sees the bullet's not there, gets to it. And again, this is what's so critical. At home, it looks like a three-yard throw. Me and you both could do it, right? In reality, you have to have a special set of brains up top, football IQ, to process the information and get to the right guy. So watch his eyes. He looks to the bullet to make sure it's not there, then works to the shallow, who's running wide open because of the pick. Exactly. And now we convert a third down that then goes on to score. So that's the difference between converting and not converting is making sure your eyes are in the right spot. Perfect. So that's perfect. That's growth. That's what I was talking about. We want to see him grow. That's growth, but that's also a little bit of eye manipulation. We all know that the best quarterbacks, the Tom Brady's, the Peyton Manning's, they use their eyes to move defenders. Clearly, this is something we've seen. Huge fan of how you teed me up right there. I'm a big, big fan of that. We're in 11 personnel, one back, one tight end. The Carolina Panthers, this is really simple eye manipulation because the coverage is just cover three. We've got deep third, deep third, deep third. Okay, you always do it based on how many guys are deep. If I were to tell you, hey, cover four, how many are deep? Four. Boom, we're on. We've got curl flat, mid hook, mid hook, curl flat. Got it. Curl flat means you play the curl if someone's in the curl and then get to the flat. So if you're the curl flat defender and someone's in the curl, what do you do? Defend the curl. Just cover them, leave the flat wide open. We'll deal with that later, okay? They're in cat, which just means our cats versus their cats, we're gonna go ahead and run okay. by them, okay? We've got the X shin six to the top, which is just a big roll in. Nice. This is a middle of the field, close or open. If it's open, meaning there's wide open grass, go ahead and run the post. If it's closed, run the seam. Okay. Peyton Manning, basically, let's go ahead and say he patented this route. He would throw it all the time to Stokely, everybody else. Anybody who played slot for Peyton Manning ran a bender. Okay. You're gonna see this safety, okay? He's supposed to be deep third, but we're gonna get him to jump that. So I want you to watch this. These two guys, this slice with the abort on the OP pass, that's what makes this whole play work. They pick up that guy on the edge, Boom, so look, you can see the edge pick up there. Yep. And then watch Drew Locke, where's he looking? Jerry Judy. He's looking at Jerry Judy and that's gonna get this safety to drive. So go ahead and watch this safety, leave the center of the field. Perfect. Boom, KJ Hamler's gonna be wide open. It's not so easy though, cause on, all I remember getting on Twitter and seeing, I could make that throw, the guy's wide open. Well, okay, would you have baited the safety? Probably not. Watch him again, watch his eyes. We highlight it every time, but watch his eyes. Okay, boom, you can see him looking at Judy right there. Best part of this play, we're about 60 yards out and Jerry Judy already knows. Boom, touchdown, okay? But that's basically sixth grade eye manipulation. Okay. This is a way better clip, okay? okay? LA Chargers. 12th grade? Now well, let's go ahead and call it like, I don't know. Professional? Yeah, grad Professional school. Football? We got 11, okay? okay? We're in 11, one back, one tight end. Okay, this is combo coverage. We've got quarters to the top. Quarter, quarter, curl, mid hook. We've got man to the bottom. So this is what, right? The zone man combination coverage. This is the guy we have to move. That's the robber defender, okay? The robber, we wanna get him to take Jerry Judy here. We'll show you the Broncos play here. Just cat really F grabber, F over, whatever you wanna call it, F cross. We wanna get this guy to run with Jerry Judy. Right. Does that make sense? It makes all the sense. Okay, so let's go ahead and watch Drew Locke's eyes. Boom, okay? He's over here. What's this guy doing already? He's coming down this He's way. getting out of there, right? He's, He's gonna go double Judy. He's gonna bracket Judy, and we're gonna open up our deep over here. So watch this. He gets out of there, deep over, runs wide open. Okay? Perfect. 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 Right? We'll go ahead and see it from the tight because the tight's a little better, honestly. This guy's going to be out of my screen. Right there. A lot of hair, and he's going to fly out of there. Okay? Watch him. He's running so fast. Boom. Hair starts flowing. We know we can replace it with the deep over, and we do. And honestly, that's a big time throw. We forget that that's 22 yards on the opposite numbers. That's as good as it gets. Okay, a master class in eye manipulation. But I know every Drew Locke critic out there is like, his footwork's bad. Why is his footwork bad? I've said that. I've said that. So put me in the critic, put me in the apologist. I'm basically one of everything. So here we go. What we've got is, again, 11 personnel. You see it, H yep. and Y. We're good to go there. We'll go ahead and fast forward that. He's just going to bump the back. This is two man, meaning we've got two guys deep. Remember, yep. everything starts with the deep. We got two guys deep and we got man underneath. Just man to man. No combination on the back, do we? No. Nope, just one guy on the back. We want to throw outs against man coverage. Anytime you have a speed out against man, it works. Run away. The issue is we've got the right foot back. Okay. Okay, so when he's right foot back, what he's got to do is then punch and hop, and it's going to force him to be late. What we'd love to see him do, especially year one or two in the NFL, flip your feet, put your left foot back, just catch, flip, and go. Okay. Okay? New, young New England, young Tom Brady, yes. left foot back, throwing on time. 
Old Tom Brady puts his right foot back, so does Aaron Rodgers. But honestly, you could blindfold Aaron Rodgers, turn him around, snap it to him, and he'd still figure it out. So let's go ahead and not so. judge off of that. So we're going to watch here. Boom. You see that little hop? Yep. Let's play it back one more time so you can see that hop. That little hop is what makes him late. And then obviously it should have been a pick six. Right. If he can clean that up, because again, don't forget, he got to the correct spot with it being man-to-man. -man. If he can clean that up, he's going to take the next step for Broncos country. Okay, well, now that we've seen all this, coming up after the break, Tim is going to tell us if he thinks Drew Locke is the quarterback of the future for the Denver Broncos or if they should look elsewhere. Don't go anywhere. Thanks for sticking with us for this final segment of Broncos Beat alongside Tim Jenkins here, the former NFL quarterback and quarterback whisperer here in Colorado. Tim, you have given us a well-rounded assessment of Drew Locke's processing and mechanics, but now let's move on to the system that he's playing in. What is your overall impression of Pat Shermer's system and how Drew Locke fits within it? First, I don't need you saying quarterback whisperer because Twitter already gives me a hard enough time for that. But no, I think Pat Shermer really evolved throughout the season. I, You've got to love the run action, right? The big difference between run action and play action is we're pulling people with run action. You have to love what he did with run action. It really helped open stuff up, especially deep, and it simplified everything for the younger receivers. The play action game, whether in pass prone, it's just the quarterback and the running back, that looked great as well. So I think run action, play action, you've really got to love what he did. The quarterback movement series, when they would do all the power play action boots and then get out of there, that was stuff that I hadn't seen on tape before. So I think it was really innovative, and I think it was him pushing the envelope a little bit. Um, the drop back stuff is obviously what we talked about on the board and where we want to continue to see that growth and improvement. So I think from Pat Shermer, you really like the innovation later. There was a two point play at the end of the, I mean, it was in the Raiders game. There was a two point play they did and it was, I mean, it was incredible. I think they had ripped it off of Arizona from week 15. It was really, really good stuff. So I think there was some innovation going there. How Drew Locke fits within it. He has everything that Shermer's going to want, right? A little bit of movement to where they can do all the boot and everything. That's great. He's got enough arm strength to drive the ball down the field, and then he's beginning to process the game at a higher level. So I think the way Drew Locke fits within that is fantastic. There's the obvious growth that we have to get done this offseason and, and get ready and ramped up during training camp, but I think he fits really well into what Coach Shermer wants to do. Well, Pat Shermer, he's running a West Coast system here in Denver, and that system is known for heavy verbiage. So is it safe to say no matter who is at that quarterback position here for the Denver Broncos, whether it's a veteran, whether it's Drew Locke, or maybe even a guy here in the 2021 draft class, that there are inevitably going to be growing pains at that position? We saw the growing pains this year with Drew. Yeah. So those are kind of out of the way. I don't want to say they're out of the way because then everyone's going to crucify me if they're not this season, right? right? But those are mostly out of the way. The younger guys, it's definitely going to be a factor. The verbiage alone, so these college guys, when they're in college right now, this is all they're doing is they're going 3-3-3, three, 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 they're lining up in 3 by one they're looking over and coach is yelling 54 and they're yelling 54 and they're going, right? Modern college football is all about being fast, we want the defense to bust coverage, coverages and we'll get free plays. For them, when they then transition, I'll never forget my first time in a huddle, right, with Brian Schottenheimer talking into my helmet, which is already weird because you don't have one of those in college. And he's, hey, twins right, gun, scat right, F counter, cat, F ship, right? Just and like, you're huh. just sitting there like, dude, I, I have no idea. So then you break the huddle and then Tavon Austin looks at you and says, hey, what route do I have? And I'm like, dude, I, I don't even know what we're running here. So there's a lot that already goes into it. So these guys will have a massive growth just from the verbiage aspect of it. And yeah. Coach Shermer, uh, I would anticipate, isn't slowing down for anybody, no matter how high we take you in the draft. So that's going to be an issue. I do think the veteran aspect of it, that could be a solution because anytime you've been in the NFL, you have similar concepts, especially if you're from one of the West Coast trees, you'll be used to a little bit more verbiage. Right. So those guys coming in now, they would have a little bit of a head start on where these rookies would be. So I think it's, you know, it's going to be a lot about the direction they want to go with the organization. But the verbiage is something that, I mean, it's seriously like learning a foreign language. And right now, modern college football is more or less sixth grade. So it's jumping from sixth grade to learning a foreign language. And if there's anything I learned taking Spanish two in seventh grade, it ain't going to go well. So um, no, it's just something that I think these guys are going to have to figure out. Okay, you mentioned the direction of this team. So taking everything that we've talked about into consideration, if you were George Payton, what direction would you go in this offseason? Well, this is twofold. Okay, I would tell you that I would obviously stick with Drew Locke. I've said that a bunch, and I know a lot of people don't like that in Denver, but I would. I think he's, he showed enough on tape the ability to process information to where I think he's going to take the next step. What does that look like? Is it 25 touchdowns, 10 picks? Is it 30 and 10? I think it gets the Broncos over the hump. 
The next thing you have to evaluate is I think the reason people are feeling added pressure is they've been sold that this 2021 draft class is unheard of, right? right? We were also sold that with a kid named Jared Goff from Cal and Carson Wentz from North Dakota State. Two, you can't miss prospects, both franchise guys. Both just got ran out of town, right? So to me, we, we do this every year, which is we sell this draft class as it's the best thing ever and the next one's so terrible, there's no one in it. Yeah. I think that's what's adding pressure to not only Denver, but just about everybody. It feels like there's two teams in the whole NFL that are happy, which is Kansas City and Tampa, right? So obviously they're happy because they just both made it to the Super Bowl. So I think that's what's adding pressure. And what I would tell Broncos country is that's not the case, right? 2022, there's some guys in that class that are going to be really good football players. So I think you could give Drew Locke another season and you can still have your eyes on that 2022 class. I also think there's some steals in this 2021 class that are going to be mid to late round picks. Jamie Newman, there's some guys that Really, you can go and get them later that are going to be high-value picks. Do they turn into Dak Prescott? I don't know. Maybe. The tape looks really, really promising. So that's where I tell you uh, Broncos country can take a, you know, when Aaron Rodgers spelled relax for Green Bay, right, and everything turned out. I think we can relax a little bit. I think Drew's going to take some really good steps this offseason. And then if you couple that with whether they grab a free agent quarterback or they draft a more value pick later, I think there are a lot of options for Denver if they don't go quarterback at nine. Well, Tim, thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming in. I feel like I learned a lot about the game and some of those nuances of Drew Locke's game. If you guys want more content from Tim Jenkins, be sure to follow him on Twitter at T Jenkins Elite. You have a really great YouTube channel. Where, how can we subscribe to that? All things QB. There's a bunch of quarterback breakdowns. Hopefully the fans can go and watch and learn something and not be so alerted and bothered <laughs> a lot of breakdowns there on youtube and if you guys want to work with him just head to jenkinselite.com like always i will see you same time same place next monday